Welcome back to Balanced Health. You know, we've all heard that high cholesterol can lead to arterial blockages and heart attacks. To add to the fear, we've, we're bombarded with pharmaceutical advertisements, which often claim that if our cholesterol is over 200, we need to ask our doctor to prescribe us statin drugs. But what's the truth about statin drugs and cholesterol? That's our topic for today's Debunking the Myth. Our myth today, Shirley and Dr. Walt, is statin drugs are necessary if your cholesterol is over 200. We believe that's the myth. We believe that the truth is this. You want to look at your total uh, cholesterol and HDL ratio, okay? We want, you want to look at your HDL and LDL ratio, and they have a new component out now, fairly new, it's called VLDL. Mm. You, know, you want to look at that, and then look at the whole picture. Look at your fasting glucose. Some doctors take insulin level. This whole picture together, uh, Dr. Walt, you, you can jump in here anytime and tell me, you know, get rid of this guy. Um, <laughs> this whole picture together, I think, and I, if, I personally would insist with my physician that he give me six months to get it Absolutely. down, unless my cholesterol is 400. Yeah, before but, I mean, you just automatically take a drug, there are other alternatives. <laughs> what do you think? Dr. Even if your cholesterol is 400, uh, point one, Joe, and you made it so well, is the total cholesterol by itself isn't a bad test, but it's not nearly as good as that entire lipid profile. Okay. And just recently, the American Heart Association has added to that a test called the APOB. That's mm -hmm. A-P-O-B. I actually think we're going to get away from the lipid profile over time and be looking at the number of lipid particles. But for now, lipid profile plus APOB. If mm -hmm. it's abnormal, Almost never are medications the first step, nor okay. should they be. Okay, what is it? It's what you talk about every week on this show. It's good nutrition and good exercise. And if that mm -hmm. abnormal lipid profile done at a physical exam, it may be, Joe, what some of us guys need to stimulate us mm -hmm. to begin to take care of ourselves, and not just ourselves, but our entire family. Well, you know, let's get specific here. Let's take Shirley's personal life and expose it on the television yeah. set here. Yeah, because I, I have to tell you, I was very concerned that my cholesterol had gone up a few points uh, in a year okay. and a half. Well, a lot, actually. My, my, eight, my LDLs were 117 a year and a half ago, and, I, and it just came in at 140, is that five? 143. So, so which that's is, high. Which is seemingly a little high, but I'm going to ask Dr. Walter to comment on this if I throw out the numbers. Your total cholesterol was 231. I think you're going to live to the next show. I don't uh, your, know. <laughs> your HDL was 69, which is a very strong number. That's your, the your good ratio, cholesterol. Yes. Your uh, LDL to HDL ratio was about 2 to 1. Anything 2.5 to 1 or below is considered a, a healthy range. Some will even let you go as much as 3 to 1. And then something, Doctor, I'd like you to comment also. Your fasting glucose was 86 and your triglycerides were normal. So I think big picture, mm -hmm. there's nothing imminent here. We'd no, absolutely not. Um, those are numbers that are rising, and ours do tend to rise with age as, mm -hmm. as we mature. Even if we're taking care of ourselves, those numbers can have the tendency to go up. I like to think of the lipid profile. You've got the total cholesterol. You've got the LDL. Remember, lethal cholesterol. Yes. That's the killer one. Right. The HDL. Healthy. healthy. <laughs> That's what I remember. Absolutely. Healthy, happy cholesterol. And you've got a very good one there. It's very protective. But that LDL by itself, we know that as it gets above 130, that your risk for cardiovascular disease, heart attack, and stroke begins to mm -hmm. rise. But Joe, as you point out, no reason to panic. But it is a sign that, well, what can I do differently exactly. when it comes to my physical activity, can I reduce sedentary activity and increase physical activity? Mm -hmm. What do I do with my nutrition? Can I reduce those bad carbs and bad proteins and yeah. bad fats and increase the good carbs and the good fats? And then the third leg of that stool, we know about exercise, we all know about nutrition, yeah. rest. We now know yeah. that the more sleep that we get, the less likely it is that we're going to have cardiovascular disease and obesity. There's something about God's wow. divine mm. design mm -hmm. for good rest the for theme of the show. children and I'm adults. I'm sure that's why it was high. It wasn't the cream yes, in my no. coffee. <laughs> it wasn't my occasional ice cream. It had to be the sleep. I need more sleep. Okay, I can handle that. <laughs> you know, Dr. Will, comment on this too, and I'll, I'll, I'll preface this by saying there's not solid scientific evidence of this, but I think that there is about enough empirical applications in the nutrition world you, you hear about these people of cholesterol of 350, my, you know, my grandma mm -hmm. had a, a LDL of 198, lived to be 85. Another guy, his cholesterol of 200, LDL of 90, he dies at 55. Mm. Um, the the low-density lipoprotein, which tends to be able to wander a little bit more within the arteries, right, because it's lower density, when those are oxidized or have structural damage, 
they don't know exactly what they're supposed to do because they're kind of, um, you know, mentally not there. And they kind of tend to ad adhere, uh, adhere to the arterial walls, right? So we talk about antioxidants, keeping cells healthy. The, so if these cells, is there, it, it, what, do you, what do you think of that notion? That the fact that the oxidation of these cells is just as much a risk, if not more, of just the LDL itself. Well, our current lipid profiles measure cholesterol concentration. They do not measure the number of particles nor their size. For example, with the LDL, we know that the smaller the particle, the more likely that little puppy is to go right through the wall of the artery, cause the hardening of the artery that can lead to disease. The larger LDL particles tend not to do that. So that's why I say in the future we're going to be measuring particle number and particle size. The way that affects what you said with grandma is that she can have the LDL that's healthy LDL, believe it or not, there is such a thing, huh. and live a very long time. If she has the more dangerous one, the one that's smaller, more likely to go through the wall, it's much riskier. But in general, until those tests are available, nutrition, exercise, and sleep for at least six months. And then if those numbers don't come into a normal range based upon your age and your risk, then either supplements or medication are something that you could then consider. Mm -hmm. you know, Doctor, a lot of our viewers go to alternative practitioners and they do some different things in their physicals than the mainstream. Mm -hmm. One of the things they do is a micro microscopy or live blood cell test. Um, are you familiar with those? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. what do you think of those? I mean, I've had them done, I found them fascinating, wasn't quite sure, you know, because what they do, Shirley, is they take your blood and they put it on a slide, a microscope slide, they cover it right away, then they put it underneath there and zoom it up a jillion times, whatever it is, mm. and they say, look, there's damaged cells, there, your red blood cells are sticking together, your cells are too big, they're too small, they're wow. moving nicely, they're not. What, what do you think of the yeah. scientific validity of those? You know, my whole thing when it comes to alternative, our conventional medicine is, what's the evidence? Mm -hmm. Kind of to be Berean, you know, as Paul talked about in Acts 17, how do we find truth? And, and as I look at those tests, the evidence supporting them there isn't uh, to the point for me where they should be recommend, recommended routinely. In the hands of some practitioners, they may be very helpful, but as a general rule, I wouldn't say that the evidence is there uh, to make them worth the money that they cost unless, unless it's done within a study protocol. Mm -hmm. And in that case, those tests are provided at no charge. One of the things that jumps out at me right away with those tests is that I've had several of them, and the amount of time that my blood sits on that thing has varied quite a bit. And I'm mm. thinking, as soon as the oxygen's hitting that blood, that's got to, right? No question. And we found that, and surely in your test, the potassium, which is contained in the red blood cells, if that lab, if once they draw your blood, if it sits for too long, mm. or if it's not separated or stored correctly, or if it's sent to a lab in another mm. city, then that potassium can leach out of the cells, and guess what happens? You get a high, high potassium rating. reading, and it's what we call a false yeah. positive. Not of concern, but it does concern you when you get that. Well, sure, test. it does. And we're almost out of time. Time. Anything else we need to say about physicals? Well, I think it's a good reminder for all of us, if we love our loved ones, to be sure that we and they get the checkups that they need. You know, Paul says that examine yourself what? To find yourself approved. And that includes not just our spiritual health, emotional health, and relational health. But our physical health. That's good. Good. That's so good. get one. That's the bottom so line. Get, get one. one. Well, remember, if you'd like to order a DVD of this show, just give us a call. And coming up, tips on buying organic meats. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.